Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chai Ho Narutamam Devan Saraswatim Vyasam Tatodayam Odirayet Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer first his respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead Lord Narayan, unto the Supermost Human Being, Sri Nara Narayan Rishi, unto the Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and Srila Vyasa Dev, the author. Nasta Prayeshu Abhadreshu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavat Uttama Shloke. Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki. By regular attendance on the classes of Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering of service unto the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is destroyed to practically nil, and loving service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established within one's heart as an irrevocable fact. So, um, just, we, 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 we can read the verse. Should we read the verse like, you know, like we did three times yeah. every day? Okay, we'll read the verse again, because we've been reading these verses for a while. Um, Okay, back to the verse one. I'll just. Okay. Um, Etavad eva ji gashyam. Etavad eva ji gashyam. Tatva ji gash natmana. Tatva ji gash natmana. Anvaya vyati vyati rekabhyam. Anvaya vyati rekabhyam. Yatsyat sarvata sarvada. Etavadeva vigyasyam, Tatva jigyasnatmana, Hanvaya vyati 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 rekabhyam, Yachyat sarvatra sarvada. Please chant. Etavadeva jigyasyam, Tatva jigasunatmana Anvaya vyati rekabhyam Anvaya vyati rekabhyam Tatva sarvata sarvada Anybody else? Go on. Oh, sorry. Etava deva jigasyam Tatva jigasunatmana Avaya <laughs> So we do word for word and... No, just intonation. Pardon? Just translation is enough. Just translation. To the translation, excuse me, translation. Uh, this is text 36, two, chapter, Canto 2, uh, chapter 9. A person who is searching after the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, must certainly search for it up to this, in all circumstances, in all space and time, and both directly and indirectly. Uh, I say, you say please, a, a person who is searching, a person who is searching after, the supreme absolute truth, after the supreme absolute truth, uh, the personality of Godhead, must certainly search for it, up to this, in all circumstances, in all time, space and time, and both directly and indirectly. Okay, so we'll go to the part where we left off with the purport, and there's three paragraphs. 
that I was asked to read and speak about. Um, one second, I'm missing. Here it is. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated um, that one can serve the Lord by offering the result of one's own work. It does not matter what one does. Generally, men may say that whatever they are doing is inspired by God, but that is not all. One should actually work on behalf of God as a servant of God. The Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita 9.27, Yat kodoshi yadashnasi yajadhoshi dadasiya yat tapasya sikunteya tat kudusha madarpanam. Do whatever you like or whatever may be easier for you to do. Eat whatever you may eat. Sacrifice whatever you sacrifice. Give whatever you give in charity and do whatever you do you may undertake in penance, but everything must be done for him only. If you do business or if you accept some employment, do so on behalf of the Lord. Whatever you may eat, you may offer the same to the Lord and be assured that he will return the food after eating it himself. He is the complete whole and therefore whatever he may eat as offered by the devotees is accepted because of the devotee's love. But again, it is returned as prasad for the devotee so that he can be happy eating. eating. In other words, be a servant of God and live peacefully in that consciousness, ultimately returning uh, home back to Godhead. Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, well, you know, and, and when I was reading this uh, per explanation of Srila Prabhupada, you know, be, after the verse, Yad Karosi Yad Ashna, see that, you know, Srila Prabhupada, t to me, he, he's really giving a, a lot of broad understanding of this verse because he's saying do whatever you like or whatever you may be easier for you to do eat whatever you may eat well <laughs> we don't of course you know Shri Papa's not I mean he's obviously you know Vaishnavas say ahimsa you know we don't we don't hurt animals to eat what we want but he's stating in this way so I, I feel I just felt a great broad-mindedness uh, encouragement of Srila Prabhupada to the general mass of people actually because he said these books of mine would be the law books uh, for the next 10,000 years in the Kali Yuga for people to uh, follow religious in one sense quote unquote law books but the guidelines are the gold standard bearer of, of knowledge so many people as you know Kaloshu to Sambhava most of them were born into uh, the lower modes of ignorance uh, and uh so many people will not be able to come to pure devotional service in this life. Uh, I'm speaking for myself. Even. You know, it's it's not a piece of cake in one sense. Um, but so these books were written to encourage everyone uh, to do what they can do, uh, do the best we can. Uh, Vashish Kapu would say that a lot. Do the best you can, and that's all we can do. Um, and so that's what I'm kind of one thing I got from this uh, encouraging words from Srila Prabhupada, how to become, how to be connected with the Lord in service, although maybe feeling incapable or that I, I'm not, I'm not practicing like others are practicing, but at least we can do this much. Prabhupada once said that the, the drunk can become Krishna consciousness. Uh, he, I think he even mentioned the drunk in the, you know, on the street if he just offers his wine first to, to Krishna and says, Krishna is the taste of this wine, and then gets drunk. Because after he keeps doing that, he'll, if he keeps uh, remembering Krishna, he'll eventually give up that bad habit. So um, Krishna consciousness is so amazing and very powerful in that way that we're associating directly with the Lord through the sound vibration and through these other activities um, of bhakti, the nine angas, basically that are enunciated by Sri Pallad Maharaj. Um, the next, uh, it says, Sri the Prabhupada's purport, it, said, it is said in the Skanda Purana, Yesya Smritya Cha Nam Namokya, excuse me, Tapo Yagya Kriya Dishu Nunam Sampu Purn. Pur matang eti sadyo vande tam achutam. I offer my obeisances unto him, uh, the infallible, because 
simply by either remembering him or vibrating the his holy name, one can attain perfection of all penances, sacrifice the fruit of activities, or um, yeah, sacrifices the fruit of activities, and this process can be universally followed. It is enjoined in the Shema Bhagavatam, Canto 2, 3, 10. Akama sarva kama va moksha kano dharadi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param Though, quote, a thorn person be full of desires or have no desires, he may follow this path of infallible bhakti yoga for complete perfection, unquote. One need not be anxious to oh, propitiate each and every demigod and goddess because the root of all of them is the personality of Godhead. As by pouring water on the root of a tree, one serves and enlivens all the branches and leaves. So by rendering service unto the Supreme Lord, one automatically serves every god and goddess without extraneous effort. The Lord is all-pervading and therefore service unto him is also all-pervading. This fact is corroborated in the Skanda Purana. Uh, just as far as this verse goes, yes, uh, many people in this world, especially in the East, do actually focus on worshiping the demigods. Why basically, um, forget the verse, something about Rita, Rita Gyana. The, the heart, the heart in generally, uh, the souls want uh, enjoyment in this world, sense enjoyment, that's why we came, to forget Krishna, didn't want to serve Krishna, so we came to this uh, forgetful world uh, where Lord Krishna, by his lower energies, created illusion, so, we, so the souls could do that. Um, so, when people are involved in religion in general, they, they tend to be fruitive. Like God, uh, Srila Prabhupada often would say, as you know, uh, Christ, the, he would use the Christians, of course, that would include all faiths. And God, give us our daily bread, uh, which daily bread can mean so many types of sense gratification. Um, so people generally go to God uh, for, our da for daily bread. So this Bhagavatam is so enlightening uh, because it explains uh, the real happiness, the real pleasures that are, are available to our hearts, um, and the ultimate solution to solve um, the problems of repeated birth and death and, uh, and the great dangers of material existence. So, um, although it's said here that we do not have to go to every god and goddess, still, Srila Prabhupada also quotes, he also states how we should give all respect to the demigods. Um, Srila Prabhupada, uh, in different times, went into temples with different demigods and goddesses, and, and he paid his humble basis to the demigods. So there was no question of disrespecting the demigods with the pure devotee, because he understands they're all uh, exalted uh, servants of the Lord in different capacities. But the, the pure devotee will condemn the worship of demigods in one sense, condemn because it misleads the soul into repeated births and deaths. After all, th everything being temporary, no demigods can award liberation even up to Lord uh, Brahma, um, Lord Shiva, as far as I know, he, he cannot award deathlessness. Only Lord Vishnu, Narayan, Krishna can award what we, what we desire, and that what we desire, we can, we'll discuss just after this. Um, and I'll finish the, uh, what I was supposed to finish here. So that verse um, that Srila Prabhupada said is corroborating um, the above of how anybody, no matter whether they're full of material desires, want moksha, want, uh, or, want, or have no material desires, um, they should engage uh, in the devotional service of the Lord and get everything that they do desire. And that verse says, Archite deva devesha deveshe shanka chakra gadadhare archita sarva deveshur yata sarva gato hari. When the Supreme Lord, the personality of Godhead, who carries in his hands a conch shell, 
wheel, club, and lotus flower is worshipped. Certainly all other demigods are worshipped automatically because Hari, the personality of Godhead, is all-pervading. Therefore, in all cases, namely nominative, objective, causative, dative, ablative, possessive, and supportive, everyone is benefited by such transcendental loving service to the Lord. The man who worships the Lord, the Lord himself who is worshipped, the cause for which the Lord is worshipped, the source of supply, the place where such worship is done, etc. Everything is benefited by such an action. We were always uh, told that when we were going out on Harinam Sankirtan, which we basically did a lot of, uh, even though I came in the late 70s, I, I miss the the real, the juggies that were going on with, uh, you know, devotees, so many devotees, but of course, you know, Vishnu Janan Swami was a very famous devotee who went out on the streets literally six hours, eight hours a day, you know, especially in, in Los Angeles. He was mostly in San Francisco and Los Angeles. And devotees used to just chant and chant and, you know, and try to distribute it back to Godheads, the passerbys, and give incense. That was, you know, the, the incense was a very great trademark of the devotees. And, 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 uh, and then they would come back to the temples for a break for lunch. They would hear a class, a short class, and then they would go back out, you know, in the afternoon and uh, chant for another few hours. And on the weekends, they'd go out to uh, places like UCLA, uh, Hollywood Boulevard. That was a great stomping ground for the devotees. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, and then uh, well, we were told, you know, um, even if it seems like the response of the crowd is not favorable, and a lot of times it was quite unfavorable, they'd come up and practically attack us. Uh, they practically would attack us. And, uh, but um, we were told that the sound vibration of, that, of the Hari Nam goes around the planet like so many times more than the mundane sound. So it's much more powerful. I think it's 10 times as powerful as mundane sound. And the entities, especially the human beings, are imperceptibly receiving the greatest benefit, a Gyata Sakriti, from the devotees going out and vibrating the holy name around like that. Or holding festivals, or you know, where Nam Sankirtan is there, um, or, or chanting in the temples, of course, that sound vibration is going around the planet also. So it's you know, such uh, the greatest welfare activity, as Srila Prabhupada would often say. Um, forget the Sanskrit for that, but greatest, greatest benefit. Um, okay, so let me see. I think that's it. Yeah, that's all I was supposed to read with that. Uh, purport, it's wonderful purport. I wish you the proper. Does anybody have anything to add to that or any inquiries to what was read and what we heard about? Um, engaging in devotional service, anybody can do it, everybody should do it for their benefit. That's what's so wonderful that it, 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 Krishna consciousness is so broad-minded that um, if people just live like people and not like two-legged animals, you know, which we see more and more of because of a failure to follow the regular principles of religious freedom, then it doesn't matter how much engages in devotional service in one sense, although, sure, it's recommended that we finish our business in one life and get out of this horrible place. And so, therefore, those serious candidates will take up the, you know, this bhakti under the guidance, able of the guidance of the bona fide guru. And, but those who, who don't feel the compunction or desire to do that in this life, that's fine. They will gain piety by following the regular principles and chanting. In, 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 you know, and in whatever way they want, in their home, in their, in their own groups, and, uh, or their names of God that they like. Maybe they like the, the names of Jesus and Jehovah, Jehovah Yahweh, uh, you know, Adonai, uh, whatever, uh, Allah. And, and of course, you know, some of these groups, they, they're chanting more and more now. They're actually the names of God, it's an amazing. There's a, there's a uh, really amazing poster coming out of Columbus, Ohio, going towards New Vrindavan. It's just out in the outskirts. Uh, have you seen that? that? It was a church out there. They took down the, the one poster, 
but it was a beautiful color poster. It was a, a close-up of, uh, of a congregational member in the church. It, it looked like he was in bliss. He was holding his hands up, and he had his eyes closed. And, and the caption says, because there's something more. <laughs> it was amazing. You know, it looked like he was in kirtan, and he had his hands up, and he was in prayer like he was singing out, because there's something more. You know, and this is something you didn't see in America. Church was more like, you know, Protestant churches. Of course, there's Catholic churches. The Catholic church, I don't think they do so much. They do chanting, of course. The chanting is there to a degree in all religions, but not so much this congregational chanting. Of course, Pentecostals, I think they get up and they really have a nicer kirtan with the holy names of the Lord. They're, they're known for having more vibrant kirtan. But by the, by the influence of the Sankirtan movement and, and the, the unalloyed acharyas that came, you know, Sri Bhaktivinoda Thakur and his Guru Maharaj, you know, Gorka Shordas and Sri Bhaktisiddhanta, the Ray of Vishnu, how they came just recently in his divine grace and voice and Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada. He came, they came and gave their ocean of compassion and, and this, this realized knowledge to everyone, just like the rain falls on the ocean, just indiscriminately. Like Lord Nityananda is very, very merciful. He didn't discriminate who was, who was fit and who was unfit. They gave and they begged everyone to chant the holy name of the Lord uh, and benefit themselves, save themselves. So. We see this, the effect of the Sankirtan movement. It's very marked, what, how it's really brought things up. Although the, you know, the craziness and the madness seems on one end, it's getting worse. On the other end, the consciousness is being raised with, with good, pious people, and they're getting better realizations, even within their own traditions, their own religious traditions, which is great. And they're preaching that more in their congregations. We have members that are preachers that come here. They're preachers of local Christian churches, and they're like, they chant Hare Krishna, but they preach Christianity to their followers, and, and, and they try. I mean, they preach Christianity, but I'm saying they, they, they inject Krishna, in, that's what I meant to say, into their sermons, uh, and it's, it's just wonderful. So, um, yes, all glorious to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Um, I want, we have some time. Oh, yes, bro. Can you expand a little bit? It says, so a person be full of desires or have no desires. Yeah. And then it says, infallible bhakti yoga. You know, if you can expand a little bit on Infallible that. bhakti yoga? Yeah. Is it? It's about the, just after the verse, two, three, ten. In the, in yeah. The yeah. Sarva kama, moksha kama, udharadi, tivrena bhakti yogena. Okay, I'll talk a little, as much as I can understand it. Um, that the Lord is encouraging all classes of men to engage in, in, in devotion. Of, uh, you know, otherwise, like Prabhupada said, human life is not human, it's animal life. So that's the great lacking in society, is that people are basically, if we're, we're not following regular principles, not following ahimsa, and, and without killing and torturing poor animals for needlessly, uh, to, you know, uh, then we're living in, in a society of animals. Um, even up in the higher levels than the United Nations, Prabhupada said, it's a society of barking dogs. <laughs> you know, no offense intended, but um, really, and that's what it is. If people are, are sticking bloody, bloody, you know, meat in their mouths, at the expense of the, the horrific um, ways and means of, of, of killing these poor creatures, then there's no hope for success in life. So when you say, the, it said the infallible process of bhakti, infallible means uh, inde, inde, undefeatable, Not, it doesn't fall, it's always perfect. And so, whereas um, in the older days, even in India, the common man couldn't recite the scriptures even. They didn't have access to that. It was in the, uh, in the hands of the Brahmins. Uh, I'm not sure about the history of that, why that was there, maybe perhaps to protect uh, unscrupulous, unqualified men from twisting the scriptures. I'm not sure, maybe you know more than me about that. But, um, but now this, 
Um, there's so many wonderful songs by Srila Nartam Das Thakur, how Nityanashi Nityananda cut a channel in the ocean of love of God and flooded, flooded the Kali Yuga and people are drowning in this ocean of, of Krishna Prema, you know, love or attraction to Krishna. So, so many people can do it and we've seen many people do it on the street. Either they're intoxicated or they're mocking the devotees. And Prabhupada said, well, that's a good thing. They're imitating the devotees. They're mocking. So what? You know, but they're chanting the holy names. And, and that means mahato trayate bhayat. So the Krishna said, says in Gita, it saves them from the greatest danger. And what's the greatest danger? Falling down into the animal species of life. Missing the opportunity to understand aham brahmasmi, jiva srupahoy. I'm, I'm an eternal servant, a loving servant of Krishna. And, and by connecting in love with Krishna as much as we can, uh, we realize our own love in our own hearts uh, for ourselves and others, uh, all of the parts and parcels. And gradually, gradually rise up the stages of bhakti unto the professional stages. So, yeah, there's no loss in, in, in engaging in this infallible process um, of bhakti. And, and the acharyas being so broad-minded have, have made, stated these verses to encourage everybody, even if, like I said before, if they're not ready to chant japa in this life, or even come to the Hare Krishna temple. But, but somehow, by contacting this knowledge, they can get the highest benefit. Uh, and, and, and get another human form, at least in the next life, to pick up again. Because as Srila Prabhupada said, the Lord, the Lord wants us to come back to Him much more than we want to come back. You know, so, so um, of course, as we engage more and more sincerely in the process, we will develop that great enthusiasm and, and, and strong uh, uh, loyum or greed to, to engage in His service more and more nicely and deeply and then be able to go back to him. Um, I don't know if that touched it, what you're speaking, but um, I'd like to just read a little bit of, of this. Um, oh, I forgot my, I forgot my phone. Oh, I have it here. And so I thought that the, 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 the songs of Srila Bhaktivinoda Bhakti talk were epitomized um, these, um, this philosophy in a practical way. <clears throat> That'd be interesting to read a little bit and perhaps comment, try to comment a little bit about this. And this is the song Shuddha Bhakata, um, Charanarenu. And it goes, the dust from the lotus feet of pure devotees gives rise to devotional service and service to the devotees is itself the supreme perfection and the root of the creeper of divine love. So it says in the first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, that how do we get this enthusiasm um, and desire to engage in devotional service, which Shravan Kirtanam is the topmost? Um, it's a it's very important aspect of the process. And, and it says in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shushu Shoshadanasya. Vasudeva Kutavruchi, Shan Mahatseva Yavipra, Punya Tirtana Shevanat. So, by serving these great devotees, great service is done. Uh, I forget the rest of it. Um, but, so by serving the lotus feet of the devotees, like Sri Bhakti Thakur says, the dust of the lotus feet of pure devotees gives rise to devotional service. And, and the service of the devotees itself is supreme perfection and the root of the tender creeper of divine love. So this tender creeper, this bhakti lata, which we want to have nourished and, and have, have our bhakti nourished, is, 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 is nourished by these activities of service to the Vaishnavas and service to the uh, Shuddha Bhakta, which is the name of the song, Shuddha Bhakta, the Charana Renu, that to the uh, lotus feet of those um, most exalted devotees. Um, the next verse is, with great care I observe the holy days of Ekadasi and Janmashtami, for they are the mothers of devotion. And with the greatest reverence and love, I choose as my dwelling place, the transcendental abode of Sri Krishna. So we know the most uh, powerful of transcendental abodes of the Lord are 
Shinabhadweep Dham is considered the most powerful Dham in this Kali Yuga. It's, it's the boat of Sri Krishna Chaitanya himself and Sri Nityananda Baladev Balaram and, and, uh, and Sri Vindavan Dham, which is so amazing place. Uh, you go there and you feel the the transcendental presence of their lordships, uh, Shishirada and Krishna and their associates. Um, it's so, and even a person like me, you know, I, I went there and just had with a heart of stone and making so many offenses. I I felt that amazing shakti of that dom, of those doms, um, and. Um, Looking, and I remember just looking out over the fields, especially in my port, that it was 96, so you could see the yoga peeth. I don't know if you could still see the yoga peeth across the rice fields now with all the big, the, the big, the beautiful, with the beautiful planetariums gone up. But, and then I saw, and it looked like an a Anglican church, you know, yoga peeth looked like a European church. And I thought, oh my God, this is incredible. You know, the, the power and the, the sight, the transcendental wisdom of, of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who designed that church and went out and humbly begged door to door, even to his enemies, to people who didn't like him, and, and begged just as much as people could give to, to build this beautiful uh, monument, the sacred monument to the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. And he did, uh, he did s such amazing uh, service like that. So it, it obviously, it, it reminded me, uh, Krishna consciousness is not just for ourselves, but it's for all others of this, of this world and to reunite the world. We, we hear about this, how much disunity there is, how much fighting and bickering, even within our own country. It's being torn, there's torn, you know. We feel a lot of countries are, are going through this tearing. Uh, and the answer, like she, uh, um, one, uh, we'll mention the great politician we have now, she says, the, the answer is love. We must learn to love ourselves through loving God. And then every, when we can love each other. So like Prabhupada obviously always said, that we have to water the root of the tree before we can water the branches and the leaves. So there's no question of loving each other if we don't love God uh, in some type of proper way, which is in this age is Nam Sankirtan, along with the other uh, Angas of Bhakti. And, 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 and so... And so she's trying to impress the fact on the people, which any great leader is supposed to do, because leaders of the kings are the representatives of the Lord and, and Brahminical culture. So, um, yes, it's important to give these people the knowledge and help them understand why is this all going on? Why this chaos? Why this virus is going on and doesn't seem to end? It's because of the reaction, because we're, we're failing to please the Supreme Lord who's in charge and who owns and controls everything, animate and animate in this, in this material world. And uh, therefore, uh, try to impress upon the people that performing jugya and penance to some degree or other, at least don't kill the poor animals, at least become a human being, stop the illicit sex, stop uh, gambling, stop the... Uh, uh, meaning, uh, I say, what is it? Intoxication. Yeah, minimize it at least. Of course, these things are hard to stop all, all of a sudden. But, and, and then come to the human form of life. Prabhupada would say, if one doesn't follow the four regular principles, was not even a human being. So, so, so all glories to those leaders who are helping uh, us by reminding us of these pr uh, religious principles. Um, Next verse, in the company of the loving devotees, I will, I will visit all these places where Lord Gaur Sundar traveled and performed his pastimes. My mind always begs to hear the music of the Murdunga, and my, and my heart dances in ecstasy when I hear the kind of kirtan established by Lord Chaitanya. So I, I really like this verse because it, it mentions the Murdunga, so I'd like to mention a little a bit about the Murdunga. Oh, God, you know, I really... <clears throat> I really blew it by not, because I had on my phone what I wanted to read. There was this little pastime about the Murdanga and, and, and how it is non different from Lord Balaram. So this, this Babaji, it, it was recently, it, apparently it was just recently, and they're having this festival, this Vaishnava Babaji. So they're having this festival with Lord Nityananda and Lord Gaur Sundar. And so Lord Nityananda was put on a throne, okay, and everybody was chanting, 
Uh, Lord. And then the Babaji Maharaj was carrying Lord Gorasundar out of this area to bring him over to Lord Nichananda. And so when they were walking in the procession, one disciple saw a broom that was in the way. And so the disciple went in front of the Babaji and kicked the broom away. And so Maharaj immediately turned around, took Lord Goranga, and went into the altar and locked himself in and wouldn't come out. And so everybody was bewildered. And, like, and it said, after much pleading, this is on the Iskand Desire Tree, actually. And, he, and, and uh, it said, after much pleading to the Maharaj to please come out, he finally came out. And then they asked him, what happened? He said, my disciples have kicked Lord Nityananda. Can you imagine right in front of the ceremony, Lord Nityananda, the deity? And the, he said, my disciples have kicked Lord Nityananda. He said, I, I, saw, I saw in procession when my disciples kick Lord Nityananda. And so, he, I forget the rest, right? I wish I had had it. But so basically that was the pastime where the paraphernalia, oh yeah, he was saying the paraphernalia, all the paraphernalia of the Lord is Lord Balaram, and that is in the Shastra. So we should be very careful. One thing I have just have to mention is, don't mean to be, I'm not a manager here, but I'd say in my 43 years uh, or more, I think 44, but anyway, being in the temples, the Murdunga drum is never put on its small head. That has never been done. I, I was with, actually, I have to be with Nityananda Pran Prabhu, who was one of the most uh, famous uh, of our Madanga players of all time. He's from Sridhar Mayapur. And I never saw him do it. And I never saw others, Prabhupada's disciples, who were very famous Madanga players. She saw Jai Sachinanda, who Prabhupada said he was a Bengali in his last life. <laughs> he never put the drum on its small head. Anyway, just for practical purposes, it didn't look like it can get knocked over easier if it's on its small head. It's just not, to me, that's not. But, 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 but Murdunga is, is given a, a resting place on the big, on its large, and, and put on a mat like here. Uh, because it's Lord Balaram. And so um, I wanted to make that point. And, and, and we should maybe try to avoid putting our clothing on Sri Harmonium, who is also Lord Balaram, because there's coat, there's coat hangers out there. I mean, you know, it's just that those little things may seem little, but we're actually, we would never, I mean, we wouldn't think about with the deity, oh my God, we're doing anything with the deity, the Lord, that was inappropriate. So, so these things, but they're, they're, they're part of our Siddhanta, I just wanted to mention, because uh, it's in the song. Um, and, um, it's almost, it's getting late, so I'll, I'll conclude. The type of kirtan established by Lord Gaurasundar. So I, I, I really, I, I noticed that because the translation says, when I hear the kind of kirtan, the kind of, he doesn't say when I hear the kirtan established, well, when I hear that kind of kirtan given by Lord Gaurachandra, well, that could be about the same thing, but he said, he spe specified, specified this kind of kirtan. So, um, there are certain ways Srila Prabhupada liked to chant. Uh, he did like to chant in certain ways, certain melodies. He was enlivened. It, it, it's part of coming from Lord Krishna himself. Who knows better how to chant kirtan? Who knows how to dance better in kirtan than Lord Goranga himself? And Lord Krishna also dances in, in Goloka Vrindavan. If you read the pastimes, amazing pastimes. They're so attractive when they dance on stage. And they dance for their devotees, actually, for the pleasure of their devotees. They dance and must be an amazing, an amazing uh, event. Um, and almost finishing up. It, um, I feel supreme bliss when I behold the deity forms of the divine couple Shishi, Radha, and Krishna. And I conquer all worldly illusions by honoring the Lord's prasadam. So as we know, we chant the prayers to, Lord, to the prasadam to remind us that we're honoring the prasadam. It's also called prasadam seva. So, so devotees always try to stay in that mood 24-7, that I'm a servant of the Lord and his devotees and his paraphernalia. So when I honor the prasad, I try to be in that mood of prasad seva. And the next verse, every day Goloka Vrindavan appears in my home when I see Lord Hari being worshipped there. My joy knows, knows no bounds when I see the Ganga, a river of nectar emanating from the Lord's lotus feet. These are obviously the, the ecstasies and the divine visions of the unalloyed, uh, most intimate uh, uh, 
associates of Shihari. The sight of the Tulsi plant soothes my soul, for I know she gives pleasure to Lord Krishna. I feel that my life has been fulfilled when I honor Shak, a green leafy vegetable preparation that is a favorite of Lord Chaitanya's. Whatever Bhakti Note obtains that furthers devotional service to Sri Krishna, he accepts every day with the greatest joy. Is that amazing? I wish I could even come close. Some things that I obtain, but they're not help if they're not um, pleasing to my mind, then I I may forget the Lord. Uh, if if I you know depending on my consciousness and but these unalloyed devotees are saying I I accept these things anything that comes to me that's uh, that furthers devotional service with the greatest joy. Anyway, time ran out and. Um, Thank you very much for coming. Um, and if anybody would like to add or ask for any clarification or d discuss anything that was mentioned? Oh, do you mind? Do you mind? Do you, or, sorry, did you? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yes. No, go ahead, Marty. Marty, back there. Yes. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you. You were mentioning um, how you joined the Indus and of course, I'd like to hear how the devotees joined. Do you mind sharing oh, a little yeah. about how you joined? Oh, you're saying you're enjoying it? Oh, um, I was saying it's always in my opinion to hear how the devotees joined. You mentioned you joined in the late 70s. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit about what attracted you to Krishna consciousness and um, a little bit about that story? Okay, the question. Uh, thank you, Manaji. Manaji asked me, um, how I joined Krishna Consciousness. I mean, you know, that can be great long stories, and we don't, don't need to do a good long story. But basically, I guess, um, I think a lot of us, I have to say, I'm assuming, most of the devotees, when they were children, even had some inquiry about life, existence, and that's mentioned in the Shatra Slokis. You know, Prabhupada says that human beings generally inquire like that about the, the universe, the, the things, um, What's, what, what is this? Um, not wanting to blindly accept material life and just go get on the conveyor belt and just go through the motions, you know, and get your degrees and qualifications. So, you, you know, then you, then you get this and then you become married and, you know, the whole, the stages of Dharma, Arta, Moksha, Kama. And, and, and uh, so I was one of those, and I'm sure you were too, and most, most of the devotees. Um, and, and, and so... Um, but I didn't get the quest, the answers from my rabbi. You know, I was brought up in the Jewish tradition. Um, so, you know, they're well intended, but they, they, they just, they didn't know much past the rituals and regulation and, and the, the rules and regula the rituals. You know, the Torah, parade the Torah. They basically do like the, uh, uh, the Sikhs. They, they worship the book, uh, they, they, and, which is good. They, they give reference to the scripture reverence. Um, and they have these little chatters like this, the Jews. It's like they call it tzalis, but it's like a chatter, and they, they touch the Torah, and they kiss the, ch and they touch the Torah like that. And you can do that, and you, you stand in the aisles, and they parade. So, but I wasn't, uh, uh, like a lot of us, we were not satisfied with these rituals. We didn't know what, what, what's the purpose. So, I was, just went to college, and a couple, two, four years, uh, managed to, uh, uh, amidst my own stupidity and my intoxication that I was doing, get two years behind me, but I couldn't see the use of this useless classes they were giving me, which I couldn't really do well with physics and this and that as an undergraduate. I, had, I thought, what are they giving me this for? You know, <laughs> you know it's not even my major. And they're good. You know, it's like it's just the stupidity. It was just frustrating. And then I was spending my time in the library mostly. That's where my classes were. I give myself classes, philosophy, and the Western, you know, philosophers and the European philosophers, and then the Chinese and the Taoists and the blah 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 blah. You know, I think a lot of us went into that first. And uh, in any case, um, like my my friend, I have a friend, Sudarshan Prabhu. I don't know if he's listening. He's in, from Denver. He used to say, yeah, Maya took me before I joined and from the 50-yard line. He was, a, he was a football player, so I guess he references to football. Um, and he, uh, he said, she drop-kicked me over the field goal, 50 yards. 
<laughs> and so that's basically what it took for me. I had to be drop kicked by the material energy and shown, hey, this, this is, you got to get serious about the Lord and, and put me in such distress, you know. Um, and uh, so then, not to get into that scenario, that nightmare, basically. I mean, I came from a family of teachers. They were always encouraging us to think about things, which was nice. Um, then I ended up in a yoga ashram. I decided, yeah, uh, I prayed to Jesus, actually. And I think my, my, I heard my grandmother roll over in her grave. Sorry, Grandma. Um, but, uh, and then he, he led me to the yoga. And, and, uh, and I stayed in uh, impersonalist yoga. They weren't my bodies. They weren't inimical to Krishna, but they were just impersonal. The, the, the yogi was a Brahman, apparently a Brahman realized yogi. The story is someone came with a hatchet to, to cut his head off and his, his disciple was there, protected him. But he, he saw it coming and he didn't flinch. So that convinced me he was probably a Brahman yogi, a genuine, but, but not understanding the, the supreme tattva of, of, of bhakti and Krishna, Radha Krishna. So, and so I'll say that somehow or other there were devotees in that ashram by, by Krishna's arrangement and some had left back to Godheads in that ashram in the room where we used to take our vegetarian meals, you know. And, um, and I just started, I, I started get, I was disillusioned by the talk. I mean, in general, it was nice talk. It was, it was mode of goodness, good people. They were yogis. They were trying to understand. We were trying to understand higher knowledge, but it was basically mostly speculation, and, and it just didn't get anywhere. And so I took shelter of the back to Godhead, and I don't know if that was at what point, but um, at one time I, I went to see a, a lady. Her name was Elizabeth Clare Prophet. She was one of the big uh, gurus in those days, and... and uh, they were into like demigod worship of some kind. And so I, I drove my car up to the, the boulevard. It was at night and, and from, the, from the yoga ashram, which was just a couple, a one block off of Hollywood Boulevard in that yoga ashram, to, to go into the big, to, to Hollywood and make a right turn. All of a sudden, a big Hari Nam party came across my vehicle. It looked like a train, you know? It was like a transcendental train that came across. Like, jing, 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 jing. And I was like, oh my God, what does this that, you know? And the kids and women and everybody and men, they were just going across and just dancing across the street, you know? It was a spiritual energy that just crossed my car. And I was like, who are they? Man, that's amazing. And so then, I let them go and I just went on to the meeting, you know. And then, but that experience just like woke me up, I guess, in, in an amazing way. And then I started taking shelter of Srila Prabhupada and his uh, Prabhupada speaks out in the middle of the Back to Godhead and read that, you know, the real meat of the Gita, uh, I mean, of the Godhead to hear about what, what is this about. And somehow or other, it was just progressively some person in there I was playing basketball with, he was a carpenter, he lived there, and he was part of the yoga group. And um, we did our sadhana, we got up at five o'clock, so-called sadhana, it was impersonal sadhana. But we did chants to Lord Shiva, to Lord Krishna, we did the Ma Mantra, uh, of course we did it backwards, well, we did it forwards according to them, and uh, not according to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But, um, and then uh, he invited me to the Hare Krishna Sunday feast one time. He said, hey, do you want to come to the Hare Krishna feast? And then I was open. Actually, one young lady actually was there. It was pretty amazing. She asked me to come play tennis with her on a tennis court one day, you know. So, okay, I said, okay, let's play tennis. So I went and played tennis. We went and played tennis. Then we went back to, her, to the ashram, and she said, hey, come on, I want you to listen to this record. And, of course, it's almost time, but a couple of seconds. And so, and then she played a Prabhupada's album, you know, one of, his, one of those albums that they cut in the old days, you know, Chintamani, Prakata Sadmasu. I didn't really get it. I didn't know what was really going on, but it was just that sound vibration. I was hearing Srila Prabhupada, and she was, she was, must have been a devotee, you know. I mean, she was playing this Prabhupada's record for me. She didn't state that otherwise when I knew her for a month. I mean, I didn't know who these people were, but they were like devotees living in this ashram. It was pretty amazing. And once I went to the temple, and the first devotee I saw was Vishoka Prabhu, who lives up there. He was going down the street of Watsika in Los Angeles Temple, and I thought, well, that, that person's mumbling to themselves, you know? That's kind of interesting. And I just, I just kept walking back, toward, to, walking towards the temple. I crossed his path, but I remember, amazing, I remembered who it was after all these years. And then Davida Prabhu came to me, and then he, would, he reached out to me, you know, I went to the temple. And I went in the temple, I looked in the temple, and they were having a kirtan. And 
I looked at that, and they're running around, you know. And I remember, I remember the devotee was doing. He turned out to be my sankirtan leader, my big, my, my big. Anyway, and I and I said, hey, they're getting their exercise. This is good. I like this. You know, getting exercise, running around, <laughs> running around the temple. It's good. Stay fit. And then, um, and then Davida, you know, like gave me a full dose of of that famous verse, Madhuram 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 Madhuram. You know, and I was like, uh, like. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what he was saying, you know, but he would have such a blissful look on his face. I thought, boy, these people are the real deal, you know. I think oh, they were so happy. I said, maybe I'd like to come join them. And I went back to the ashram for a while, and I just couldn't stay there, you know. I just couldn't stay in the association of that dry, that dry kind of environment. I had to come back with the devotees, you know. And then finally I met, uh, when I came back, you know, I met uh, Chutananda Maharaj was talking to my Guru, Diksha Guru to be Rameshwar Swami out on the on the sidewalk, and Rameshwar Swami was being real nice to me, you know, and you know, Chutan, yeah, yeah, kind of funny sense of humor. And uh, Rameshwar Swami said, "Do you know who God is?" And uh, <laughs> they were near, they were near, kind of down the street from the temple a little bit, outside his quarters. And Chutananda said, "Yeah, he's a great man. He lives not too far from here." <laughs> I guess he was referring to the deity of Kamini Dwarkadish. And I was like lost, just one way over my head. But anyway, and I kind of didn't get it. But And then, uh, all, and after he talked to me a while, then all of a sudden, Donovan Mirage came out. It was just like an arrangement. Every these things were happening. Donovan Mirage, who had just come back from England with a, with a very successful Bhakti program, new Bhakti program, came out on the street, and then Ramasar Swami looked, oh, there's Donovan Mirage. You probably want to meet him, you know. And then I went in there and talked to him inside the Bhakti program. My last idea was to join and shave my head and stay there, you know. I just didn't really, well, you know. And it was kind of austere inside the Brahmachari ashram. I was kind of looking for the furniture. I didn't see much. There was just a lot of, there was, there was a bump bed, hard bump beds and a linoleum floor and a little locker. And I thought, hmm, I don't know about this. But, but John Grimard actually had been a great uh, volleyball player at UCLA. And we always had season tickets to the UCLA basketball games, me and my father, for like four or five years. Uh, and actually, I think we might, anyway, <laughs> kind of an interesting thing. And so just because of that affiliation, it done. And, and I saw him wearing his wooden shoes, you know, and I saw with the pigs in them, you know, and I, I was looking, I'm like, oh my God, this, he's really serious about this. <laughs> he was wearing, you know, click, clock, click, clock. Wearing these wooden shoes, you know. I mean, that's the first time I saw those, and I thought, yeah, these people are serious about what they're doing, and they're, they're the real deal. So, anyway, yeah, I, t I tried it. He said, hey, why don't you just try it out? So I tried it out and didn't leave. That's I just kind of Krishna. Krishna knew the, the, the right combination to get me connected. And, and, that, and, that, and that just goes to show how stubborn. I was and how stubborn generally we are to not leave this miserable material life which is just kicking us, you know, and giving us little pleasures, little pleasures and thinking, yeah, let me let's just go on and it may, it'll get better or something, you know. And so the, uh, the uh, Vaishnavas are so merciful and they spend, like Prabhupada said, we spill so much blood which, uh, for, to make someone a devotee. So we don't want them to leave after all that. And, uh, and that's what it takes usually to, to extricate someone. Just, real, just one real quick thing. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was crying when one of his sannyasis was pulled out of the Association of Devotees by his ex-wife, who came to pull him away. And he was very sad. And he said, you know, it's like that. So that the, 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 the Acharyas are, are oceans of compassion, and uh, we're, we're so much blessed. So anyway. Hare Krishna. Thank you for that question. Uh, and thank you everybody for coming in this cold morning in New Vrindavan Dham. Thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. This is Divine Grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai. Bhaktivedanta Thakur Ki Jai. 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 Jai